consequences today for someone who was so blatant in his effort to stonewall Congress and their efforts to investigate the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol. Former Trump aide Peter Navarro has been found guilty on two counts of contempt of Congress after failing to comply with a subpoena from the January 6th Select Committee last year requesting documents and testimony. Navarro rebuffed the committee even as he was seemingly willing to talk to anyone who would listen to him about the 2020 election and his personal extreme efforts to keep Trump in office. As the Daily Beast puts it today, quote, Navarro wrote a book about it. He laid out the plan to interrupt Congress on right-wing blowhard Steve Bannon's podcast. He even lamented its failure while directly implicating Trump and others in an interview with the Daily Beast a shocking admission that led to stories in The Rolling Stone and a head-turning interaction on MSNBC. So it was just under oath that he wouldn't talk to anyone. Now Navarro faces up to two years in prison and fines of up to $200,000. We're back with Neil, Frank, and Basil. Um, Neil, again, not super surprising, but still a shocking state of affairs for an ex-White House senior official. Yeah, Peter Navarro is the second, Nicole, of what will likely be many Trump top officials getting felony convictions. And this was a lightning fast trial. I mean, jury selection was just 48 hours ago, and he's already been convicted. And Peter Navarro didn't put up a defense because he quite literally didn't have one. And this was about as open and shut a case as you get. Basically, his lawyer, Stan Woodward, who's the same guy as in the Mar-a-Lago Tavares debacle, which we can talk about in a moment, but Stan Woodward's defense was basically, hey, the government didn't say exactly where Peter Navarro was on the day that he was supposed to provide testimony to Congress, which was absolutely irrelevant. Navarro was being prosecuted because he didn't provide the testimony to Congress. And the other defense was Navarro was basing his refusal to testify in executive privilege, but they could never produce anything saying Donald Trump was invoking executive privilege. The Supreme Court had already rejected that claim of executive privilege eight to one. And most importantly, as you pointed out a moment ago, Peter Navarro himself wrote a book about all of this. He appeared on Ari's show, a bunch of other things, talking about all of this. So the idea that you can invoke executive privilege was just nonsense. So this was an open shut case. It's not surprising. That, um, that he's been convicted. The only surprising thing is how this guy could have been anywhere near a position of power in the United States government.